do. You can sit in the middle of Nevada Avenue, light yourself on fire. The KKK is still busy. Well, at least I would be doing something unlike you. Yeah, man, that was a clip from one of my favorite movies, HB, um, Black Klansman, uh, by my man, my mellow, the one and only Spike Lee. And he put together an ensemble that deserves a round of applause, including John David Washington, Adam Driver, Topher Grace, and our guest that's with us today, the one and only Laura Harrier is here. Yep, yep, Give her yep, a big yep, round. Yep, hey, yep, hey, yep. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Laura. Hey, I haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, we have to take what the Black Klansman clip or or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Well, you, you know what? I'm a um. First of all, I just thought it was such an awesome uh, movie, and I was happy that yeah. Spike uh, finally got a. You know, they they awarded him. I think it was for a best adapted screenplay. It gave him an Academy Award, well deserved. One, I yes, felt like yes. one. One, I felt like he should have won for the um, X movie, Malcolm X. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the the year he lost to driving Miss Daisy, and so, uh, <laughs> so I, <laughs> you know, so I wanted to talk to Patrice and meet Patrice in person. So how you doing, uh, Laura? I'm good. Um, I think the last time I saw you, we were on TRL. Oh shit! Damn. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> remember life during COVID? <laughs> Laura, that's funny because Sway always asking people, do they remember the last time he right. said, like he's always stumping people. That's, you just messed him up for the rest of this conversation, girl. Thank you. Sorry. I'm done. Done. Heather, you got a question. I'm done. I'm done, Laura. Yeah, you What's know what? I actually do have a quick question, Laura. You know, um, for for everybody, you know, and, and thank you for coming on to the show today. For everybody, we all just been trying to stay active and just trying to hone our crafts and work on the different things we've been so blessed to be able to do. How uh, you as an artist, you know, and I always refer to actors as artists as well. You as an artist, how have you been, you know, just staying sharp with your, since you can't be on the court, so to speak, on stage? How, how have you been, you know, staying sharp with everything? I mean, it's been difficult, honestly. Obviously, everything's Mm -hmm. been shut down, and there's definitely, you know, we can't be doing our normal life, like being on set and um, creating and being productive in that way. So I'm just really grateful that at least my show Hollywood was able to come out because that's a lot more than a lot of people can say. We luckily were able to finish before everything was locked down. Um, Wow, okay. But, yeah, so I don't know. It's been nice talking about that this feels a little bit like normal life you know promoting something and working through that but i've just been trying to stay creative my own way i've been mm-hmm. kind of i don't know doing pottery <laughs> painting in my backyard oh, really? like, okay. yeah That's nice. just That's trying nice. to something to, to feel like i'm i have something creative going on um but it's definitely you know it's it's weird for everybody so mm-hmm. um yeah, but I'm happy to talk to you guys. It's nice to, to get your mind off of stuff for a little bit and talk about normal life. Yeah, but you pottery know. and painting is dope, though. That's It's relaxing, too. Thank so you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I'm back. Relaxing. Yeah, she's tired. I'm, I'm back, guys. I recovered from that. Um, Are you back? Right there. I'm back. She hit you yeah. She, yeah. yeah, Laura, you took me out. Uh, but, Laura, I saw you recently. Okay. Um, that's okay, man. I like it. I love it. I like being hit like that. Um, I, I saw you post um some banana bread i uh, just had some before yeah. i talked for breakfast before i talked to you guys yeah uh and you just oh, had so some she cooking too that's what i was gonna tell you heather because heather does a, a cooking series on on the weekends and maybe you guys could team oh, up really on, yeah yeah what do you make heather so everything. So I had this idea, just like I was saying, probably with you and everybody, just the need to do something during this COVID and try to give back. So I've been teaching people um, how to entertain at home and, and, and cook on my IG live classes. So whatever comes to mind, um, we've been making uh, peas and rice. We've been making um, double stuffed veggie potatoes. We've been making everything on Sundays and it's been fun and people have been donating to charity, you know, a dollar at a time and it's just been amazing Laura so it's been fun so but banana bread sounds That's good so fun. I, yeah thank you uh, yeah I did I did banana bread for the first time I never really bake I love to cook but baking is kind of a whole other skill set science. I feel like mm-hmm. you have to be so exact and scientific mm-hmm. and like perfectly measured and that's not really how I operate like as a cooker 
as a person, <laughs> I think. So um, it's been a new challenge for sure, but it has felt good. And I'm like luckily enough to have a little herb garden in my backyard. So I've been picking those and bringing them to neighbors and friends and people who might need a little something. So that's felt good too, to, to be able to share some of the, the herbs and all the stuff I have in my yeah. backyard with people. Yeah. When, when you say herbs, um, you just... <laughs> <laughs> I got five on it. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh, okay. I parsley and oregano. <laughs> <laughs> Different type of push up. Just want to get a little bit of clarity, <laughs> El Boogie. <laughs> Just a little bit of clarity. <laughs> uh, there's so much to ask you, man. Um, I'll, I'll just one more Black Klansman question. Um, because I'm a Spike and I have done work together. I was actually. Uh, I, I would host his Prince parties and Michael Jackson parties that he would do annually. And um, and then he, I actually did She's Gotta Have It. I got about a two-second cameo, but listen, I killed that two seconds. Uh, I think I really brought up the streaming numbers with that point two seconds cameo. When you, but it's interesting how people find out they got a job. But I remember reading that um, you were actually on vacation and, when you got the a role of Patrice and Black Klansman, and Spike personally called you, is that true? Sort of. <laughs> so okay. All right. I was on vacation. I was actually in Greece, and I got a phone call. I don't know where I was sitting on the beach. Just you know, I think I was drinking a glass of rosé, <laughs> trying to enjoy my vacation, and yep. my phone rang with a number I didn't recognize. And I pick up, and I just hear Laura, it's Spike Lee. <laughs> I didn't know Spike. I never met him, never spoke to him before. And he called me out of the blue and he told me basically that he wanted me to audition for his new film. So, of course, thank you so much. I'm so excited. Um, I'll be back in New York next week. And he goes, no, I need to do Thursday. And I said, um, Spike, it's Tuesday. I'm in Greece. <laughs> and he said, I'll see you Thursday. Vacation's over. Bye. And then he hung up. So what? I got myself back to New York in 24 hours and went and met him for the first time, auditioned with him. It turned into a 45-minute long improv, and I was I was acting with Spike himself. Um, it was the most intimidating audition ever, but uh, he called me the next day and offered me the role, so it all worked out. Luckily, I, I was able to get back from vacation on time to meet him. That's crazy. That's, that's See, that goes to so if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And 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 then also when you're in a – I would even ma- imagine being around Spike can be intimidating, and I know you got to work with Queen Latifah as well, and she is who yeah. she – she is who she is, you know what I mean, from her yeah, hip-hop yeah. legacy to um, to being nominated for Best Supporting Actress in, in Chicago. When you met her, what was that like, and, and how did you work through that process? I – have looked up to her forever. I mean, I, I would run home from school to watch Living Single when I was a kid. I mean, she's somebody that I've admired for so long. And uh, when I found out she was going to be playing Hattie McDaniel, who's such an iconic figure of history, I mean, the first black person to win an Oscar in the late 30s and um, somebody who has, you know, really went through a lot of adversity and, and kind of had a sad ending, unfortunately. But um, I was so excited, first of all, to, to work with Queen Latifah. Um, and it just kind of added another weight to those scenes, I think, because for my character, Camille, Heidi McDonald is somebody who she would have looked up to her whole life and who she would have seen as the kind of, the, at the time, the only black actress publicly who was kind of successful in that way. Um, and for me, I've looked up to Queen Latifah my whole life. So it just kind of was another real life parallel of doing those scenes that I think added a lot of weight to it. And um, I kind of made my job pretty easy because I want to get life advice and career advice from Queen Latifah the same way that Camille would have from Hattie McDaniel. So it really, you know, kind of lines up in a really nice way. Um, it's and she's just so cool and nice. And it's really fun hanging out with her at the end of the day. <laughs> uh huh. Camille um, is the who you play um, in Hollywood, and yes. and uh, this series takes place during the golden age of the film industry, like from the nineteen like nineteen ten on up. And it's it's interesting. I was watching actually one of the episodes, and I was watching you play out this scene. Uh, 
I want it might have been a second episode when they you you landed the Camille landed this role and 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 Camille is just like this rising star who seems kind of innocent in the beginning, you know what I mean, to her surroundings um in terms of racial implications so on and so forth and has all these acting chops. Um but she's surrounded by all of these white actresses and then uh she gets a role um and you're playing the role of a maid and you do the scene and you come into the room and you do your line, you know, would you like some coffee or whatever it is or some tea? And then you walk out and then the director uh, comes and tells you, can you do the line funnier? And you was like, wait a minute, uh, I beg your part. Was it a joke? And he was like, well, do it more like mom's Mabley. And then you had to come back and do a whole nother interpretation. Um, when when that happened, even though you were playing this role of Camille, do you think it helped you relate to what black actresses must have went through back then when they were asked to play just these stereotypes and how brave and courageous and strong they, and resilient they must have been to have to be able to tolerate, uh, you know, that that kind of outlook or that kind of, you know, that kind of behavior towards them? Did, did, or was it just you did or were you just given a line for a role? No, I mean, I, it gave me, you know, I think a whole new level of respect and understanding of what black actors had to go through at that time. I mean, you look at, like, who we were talking about, who was keeping place, Hattie McDaniel, she was this incredible actress who was just stereotyped into these mammy roles, and that's all she was given. But she was really smart and really talented, and she stole every scene that she was in, and she was able to take those roles and as, you know, marginalized as she was and, and as racist as the things that she was being forced to do were, she was still went in there and stole every scene and was the funniest one on set and was the most talented person and, you, you know, won an Oscar for Gone with the Wind. So I just kind of wanted to pay homage to them through this and, and think about how difficult that must have been and how frustrating and um how sad it is that these, these people were, were cast to the side like that, but at the same time kind of celebrate them in, in a way, even though it was so difficult. Hmm. I'm, okay. To Sway's point, I'm wondering, because you're so gorgeous, we also know that your career path has involved modeling, and um, recently, you know, with these past clips from America's Next Top Model that a lot of people were offended by that just you know, magnify the hardships that the modeling industry can have. And we also know that there's hardships on black women within um, Hollywood. Which one do you think was more challenging on you mentally as far as the modeling industry and the industry of Hollywood? Ooh, that's a hard question. I don't know. I mean, I wasn't a model for very long. So I don't know if I can fully speak to the challenges. I think I definitely maybe experienced more racism, I feel like, as a model, though, because it's pretty upfront. Like, I mean, I definitely remember being at castings, and there would be a bunch of girls there, and they'd say, okay, you can leave, you can leave, you can leave, you can leave, and then we all walk out, and it's all the black girls, you know, like, blatant stuff like that, whereas I think now in Hollywood, it's definitely more behind closed doors, but it's obviously very prevalent. I mean, you We've been talking about Oscar so white for years, and it, you know how long it took for a movie like Black Panther to be made. Right. Um, but I, I don't know. I it's it feels different. I think both both industries clearly have um, their issues with with racism, but um, I think that in Hollywood, it's it's a little more hidden, almost in a way, than in fashion. It's all very in your face. Mhm. Mhm. That makes sense. Do you ever feel like being so beautiful? I was having a conversation with one of my girls the other day who's in modeling, and um, now she's kind of entering the on-air space, and she feels like she gets opportunities just for her looks, and she wants to, like, work harder for it as far as earning it. Do you ever feel like people don't take you as seriously or that you – Basically, do you ever have, like, pretty girl syndrome? We've spoken about this on the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you're going to make me sound so <laughs> not good if I talk about this. Um, I don't know. I do think that there is definitely a thing of when you are considered conventionally pretty or look a certain way, people 
assume that that's the only reason you're in the room. So I have always felt that I need to work twice as hard. And it was important for me to go to drama school. And I, I quit modeling to go to drama school for in New York for three years and to fully study my craft and to feel like I know what I'm doing. And I'm not just in the room because of the way that I look, because there are a lot of pretty girls. And, and if you don't have like the acting house to back it up, I don't think it's, you know, if you're not going to be around for very long. So I just wanted to work really hard and have it not be about my book, hopefully. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I apologize, guys. They're, they're literally doing construction right outside my window. <laughs> so oh. I don't know if, if you heard that noise, uh, Laura, uh, but I got some people. I didn't. You good. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. Uh, you, 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 could you hear it, Adam? Okay. Uh, uh, I, I heard apologize. it, too. You heard it, Heather? Okay, so. I didn't want to snitch on you. I know it was you. <laughs> Damn, Listen, man. we live. We in yeah. our homes. It's just happening, man. Um, where did we leave off? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about pretty girl syndrome and how Lori's like she's not just a cute face. She comes nah, with a nah. lot more quality beneath the surface, which we know, but I think it's important to hear it out loud as well because especially with social media, you'll see a lot of women, for better or for worse, that lead with their looks. And don't have any problem with people um, not diving deeper. Okay, yeah, yeah that, that makes it. Laura's from Chicago. You're from Chicago, though, right? I am. Yeah, what, what part? You grew up in the hood or the sub? But what, what was your deal? <laughs> um, no, I was born. I didn't grow up in the hood. I was born in Lincoln Park, and then um, my family moved to Evanston, and I grew up there until I moved to New York when I was 17. Okay, and, and did, did you grow up, did you know Common when you grew up? <laughs> yeah, he's my next door neighbor, no, but I listened to a lot of Common growing up, um, he's definitely, definitely was a big fan, another fellow Chicagoan. Okay, um, the, the, uh, the, the, did you jump in? I'm sorry, man, this dude is literally, like, right outside my house uh, with a, with a jackhammer. So let's play wow. some common and let okay. that dude Jack Hammer away. And <laughs> then right. we just come back and finish talking to Laura and, this, okay. and, and, and hearing this music. Chicago stand up. Chicago stand up. Adam, let's throw in a comment. Join and we'll open up the phone lines while I deal with mm-hmm. Jack Hammer. Uh, but by the way, <laughs> I, I love Hollywood. The series is great. I love period pieces. Um, it's very, it's just interesting. I don't know if people, while they're quarantining, and if you're looking for something great to watch, this is something that's really great to watch. And uh, you, each episode is just it's so many uh, sub stories and subplots to it. Uh, Laura, and I just want to say congratulations. We're going to play common and come right back. 888-742-3345. Uh, uh, that's Hollywood, as I mentioned before, on Netflix. And we got Laura Harrier with us, as well as my construction team outside my window. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with that, Laura? Man, I told him you was online. <laughs> they, they're all fans. I, it happened as soon as I got here. What, what yeah, is up with that? Listen, that's proof that you quarantine is sway. Yes, you social yes. distancing properly. This is true, man. Uh, <laughs> man, quarantine is bringing out the uh, best in a lot of folks, including yourself, Laura, because I follow you and I was watching uh, the activities you're doing. What is it? Eat freshest. Oh yeah, that's this cool food company, and they um, it's like all fresh vegetables and stuff in pouches, and you can like make sauces or whatever them but it's really great for helping people in need because they, they're able to get fresh veggies and healthy mm-hmm. food so we were helping to pass that out do y- y'all y'all deliver LA. yeah do you deliver it do you deliver the veggies um i was going i was going to the food banks and handing them out there and people would drive through in their car so it's like no contact drop off mm-hmm. you know about that hb yeah, well, so many people are doing that food bank. Um, you know, my brother, Sway, and, and Laura, I'll bring you in on a convo. Yeah, my brother's a director at, at, at a food bank in Houston, Texas. So, oh, amazing. Um, food, yeah, food bank is doing amazing things, and it's awesome, you guys, when you have opportunity to do things and work with food bank. They're an amazing company that's always just trying to look out for the community. So that's amazing that you're doing that. Really, really dope. And people actually go to food banks. Like, they go, and they've been consistent with giving back to the community. So that's dope. Okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's amazing to see how many people were, oh, you're construction? <laughs> how many people were there. So, yeah, yeah so definitely encourage people to, to go help out or to donate if they're able to. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, hey, Laura, let me ask you this. Um, and see, I'm doing the input out. I'm turning the input down after I ask questions. Are, are, is, is there, are there any plans to bring you back to Spider-Man, the Spider-Man series? You know, I can't tell you that's why I don't want to get in trouble with Marvel. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> you would only get in trouble if you was in it, though. No? <laughs> I am not talking about that. NDA. She signed the NDA. I did it, and I ain't out of it. (laughs) Respected. You notice how I tried to just slip that in like a matter of fact to see what happens. Right. (laughs) Real quick, under the construction. (laughs) Yo, well, Laura, hey, listen, it's great speaking with you, and you do awesome, man. Continue success in all the roles that you select in your career. And uh, when this is all. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And when this is all done and said, uh, definitely come to New York and join us in the studio and hang out, okay? Yes, definitely. I would love that. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. Absolutely. Yes, well. uh, get big round of applause, Laura Harrier. You can find her on Hollywood, the Netflix series. Uh, we're coming right back. We got Deontay Hitchcock here, uh, Grammy Award winning artist, Sway in the Morning, Shade 4 or 5. Laura, take care.